Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we will look at this paper, which shows that nicotinamide riboside raises NAD in the brain. There are a few reasons why I thought this study was interesting. The first of these is that it showed indeed NR was able to raise NAD levels in the brain. There are questions about what happens to NAD precursors when they're taken orally and how bioavailable they are. Some studies show that they are all converted to nicotinamide before getting into the bloodstream. But here we can see whatever path was taken, NR was able to increase NAD levels over the blood-brain barrier. The second part was that it was measured. So we have spoken with Dr. Joe Bauer, one of the authors of this paper, about measuring NAD in tissue before, and it requires a biopsy and mashing up the tissue. This is obviously not possible in the human brain in vivo. So this study showed a new way of measuring NAD levels in the brain of a living person. So let's get into it. The purpose of the study was to see if acute oral NR would raise NAD levels in the brain by measuring with magnetic resonance spectroscopy. 10 healthy volunteers were measured without taking NR. Then again, the next day, four hours after taking 900 milligrams of NR to see if their brain NAD levels were different. There were also two other baseline scans taken to confirm the test retest reliability. There was no significant difference between the three baseline scans, but the NAD in the NR scan was significantly increased with a p-value of 0.001. So the conclusion is that NR raises NAD levels in the brain and shows the efficacy of using MRS to measure NAD. The background on this study. Preclinical studies have shown that NR can help in mouse models of Alzheimer's neuroinflammation and other diseases. So NAD supplementation may be a way to treat neurodegenerative metabolic and neuropsychiatric disorders. However, so far, the human studies have mostly looked at NAD in blood plasma and cells, which may not reflect the levels in the central nervous system. Previous studies have also shown that although blood levels of NAD have increased post-supplementation, this increase did not reach all the tissues, specifically muscle tissue. Before testing whether NAD precursors have a clinical difference in neurodegenerative diseases, which would require a long and expensive trial, it would be good to see whether there are any physiological changes. So this paper is showing two key things. One is that they can measure NAD levels in the brain non-invasively in vivo, and the other is that oral NR supplementation does indeed raise these levels. I'm not going to talk about magnetic resonance spectroscopy in any depth, but very briefly, and to oversimplify, the individual hydrogen atoms, which are basically protons, can be excited to emit electromagnetic waves, which can then be detected. The exact frequency of these waves depend on the chemical bonds attached to the hydrogen, and a pattern of these frequencies can allow a molecule to be identified. In this case, they are detecting the three hydrogen atoms shown here in red on the NAD by the specific frequencies that they emit. The area under the curve of the three spikes on the graph show the concentration of NAD. There were 10 healthy adults, five males, five females, aged between 21 and 54. The average age was 32. The study was for the participants to come in and be scanned one day without NR supplementation, and then come back in the following day, having taken 900 milligrams of NR orally four hours before. These two results were then compared. As a check that the baseline measurement was reproducible, the testing without NR was repeated twice again, sometime later, with a 24-hour space between the tests. The magnetic field can be targeted onto a specific area of the brain. The image below shows the target for this investigation. Here are the results presented graphically. The NR measurement in orange shows a significant increase over the scan from the previous day, and the second test scan does not show the same change. The NAD levels increased by an average of 16% across all the participants. Here are the results of the scans with and without NR on an individual basis. They were all positive, ranging from a 7% to a 40% increase in NAD levels. 
It was only a small study, and it would have been nice to have controls. However, I thought that both outcomes of the study were very interesting. One, that NR does raise the brain NAD levels in humans, and the other that we can measure this. The authors picked a time of four hours after taking the supplement based on previous studies, but it would be really good to also look at how the levels change with time. We don't know if this was the peak or how long the levels would have remained elevated. Anyway, a cool study. Thank you so much for your attention, and I wish you all well.